Hello, I'm Tony Jameson. Uh, I've been privileged to be involved in this project, uh, the Safer Prescribing in Frailty project, uh, which has been run out of the Improvement Academy uh, and Harrogate and Rural District CCG. The project uh, was about helping our primary care colleagues in general practice think about patients with frailty and whether or not they would be better off uh, without some of their medicines. So we looked at helping them to understand what was inappropriate prescribing and thinking about the tools and the techniques that they could use in order to de-prescribe or remove medicines from patients' repeat list. What we've asked our teams to do is give us an interview, uh, thinking about what the experience has been like for them, what they've learned from it and what they can pass on to other people. And so we have a series of videos from our uh, teams that have been involved explaining their story. Um, so some of the barriers for the project um, certainly were time, so having the kind of availability of time to do the project. Um, the other barrier was just our size, so we're a big practice with 56,000 patients spread over nine sites, so it's um, managing to kind of get around all those sites and to get around all the staff that are in those sites. I do think the psychology um, techniques that we discussed right at the start was quite useful for us to realise why we might not do things and I think ours was, yeah, the barriers, yeah, the ours was the um, knowledge and time, so trying to address that through the project as well. The biggest barrier I think has been we thought we, were, we could just give a talk to the GPs and teach them about STOP to do it and hope they would take it forward. It's going to need a lot more time to actually embed it because as much as they're enthusiastic and they think, yes, there's a nice tool, there's a different way of doing things, I think they really need to, we need to spend more time individually with each GP. Our main barriers were that we didn't think we'd have the knowledge or language to effectively explain to the patient why we were thinking about um, offering to stop certain medications, particularly if they were started by a consultant. Um, I'm a GP, so I didn't really think it was my place or specialty to stop medication. But as soon as you got starting to talk to the patient about it, um, it fitted in really with the statistics that we were given that approximately 50% of medications prescribed aren't being taken anyway. So the patients generally seemed quite eager and happy to have a discussion and admit that they weren't taking the tablets. Um, so in that respect, the deprescribing was quite simple in certain respects. The Scottish um, polypharmacy prescribing guidelines which I found hugely helpful because there's a, a chart which looks at the numbers needed to treat for lots of different commonly prescribed drugs and when you look at it a lot of these drugs are not as effective as we'd like to think they are um, and, and when you start having those conversations with patients they might say well given that limited benefit um, I'd rather not take them. Yeah so there's been lo lots of uh, really useful resources that the project has enabled us to use to, to implement the change. Things like the sign guidelines on, on polypharmacy, um, the uh, apps telling us about numbers needed to treat for various medications, the seven steps uh, approach to medication reviews, really just helps you drill down and understand the patient um, perspective on their medications and where you might be able to de-prescribe. Yeah, I think we've try to improve this system, in particular by bringing the STOP application onto System 1. That's a good tool, it's a little bit clunky, but it is actually a good start actually helping in the more complex medication reviews. Well, I think what worked well was that we selected a very specific group and we tried to make it a manageable project. Uh, we realised very early on that we wouldn't be able to do a worthwhile large enough number of patients if the two of us who were involved in the project did it on our own. Uh, so we realised we'd have to motivate and involve all the other GPs at the practice. Um, in order to do that we uh, ran an education programme for all the other GPs and we set aside a very specific amount of time each week for a GP to see a patient. So each patient in our cohort got a 30 minute appointment with the name GP and that time was set aside purely to do a medication review and a polypharmacy review. So 
looking at time because we've got a clinical pharmacist that really helped because she had more time than the GP so actually having her was invaluable for the project we couldn't have done that without having a clinical pharmacist and she had more time with the patient she had longer appointments she had the availability to go out and do home visits and spend more time with the patients um, with regards to the kind of scale of the practice we um, we had sort of four people within our team so we tried to share everything out between the four of us in a really short period of time, there was a significant amount of work done to stop unnecessary prescriptions. Um, and I think in terms of successes beyond that, there was a real culture change. So if you, you know, we looked at the projects alone, we wanted that to be successful. But for us, what was really important was for the project to have a legacy. And the educational programme that we ran alongside the reviews that we were doing probably has the biggest impact and the most important part of our project is the legacy that it's left us with. I've had loads of benefits from the project. It's been a, it's a, been a huge boost to my confidence in being able to de-prescribe something that uh, I might not have considered before. So I feel much more at ease stopping medications. Um, so that's been a, a real personal uh, boost for me. I'd say it was quite eye-opening. I've done a lot of work with the elderly and especially with care homes. I actually found that there was a lot more of what I call a social care impact um, and that a lot of issues that we have um, are those patients that can't get in or don't get in don't necessarily receive the same service as those that regularly come in purely because they sort of get left behind um, and I think we sometimes forget them. They might have a district nurse going in to change bandages or seeing them but the reality is they often don't have um, a doctor or a pharmacist visit to actually review them as, as a whole. I've learned a lot. Um, I, I've kind of had new resources which give me real confidence in terms of having a conversation with patients where I ask them, uh, well, what's really important to you? And, um, and so what I've really got out of it is the confidence that when you are start asking patients what really matters to them, um, then we can partner together better um, and, and, and then patients are more invested in, in the medication they want to take, but there might be some things that we agree together probably actually aren't doing them a lot of good or the side effects are, are too burdensome and, and so sometimes we can reduce people's medication as well. Service users felt that they'd had a much better service and that we are actually providing them with a much better review. Sometimes it's very easy to do tick box exercises, okay they have to have a medication review, they have to have this, we have to code this, but the reality is everyone that we've seen and now everyone that's having a chronic disease review within our practice is having much more than they need to. You know, we've identified gold standards. We've got everybody that's doing them on board to ensure that we go the extra mile just to try and make sure that people have got the opportunity to discuss their medications, which I think is really important. The main goal of our team, the complex care team, is to try and help reduce hospital ad unnecessary hospital admissions. Um, and knowing that uh, a lot of hospital admissions are related to adverse drug reactions or um, side effects of drugs. That It felt really successful that we're at least cutting down the risk of that by de-prescribing. Um, and then there's been loads of individual patient stories which have really just been you know, fantastic to think. I've had um, a patient in a nursing home, been there a long time, I'd known him for quite a while actually, um, I went through one of these detailed medication reviews with him, uh, with the nursing staff there and with his wife. Um, and then a few weeks later, we've, we've made a lot of changes to his medication, huge amount. Um, um, I spoke to his wife and said, you know, where are we up to? How are things going? And she was very keen that we just stop. And she said, you've hit the sweet spot. This is perfect. This is great. We've not played dominoes together for five years. We're playing dominoes together. You know, I've got uh, my husband back in many respects. Uh, and this is a guy in his late 80s, advanced dementia, but we still had a significant uh, impact towards the end of his life. Something that we want to move forward with, we found it hard recording in the notes exactly why you'd done the de-prescribing for certain drugs so that it would be easy to flag up to other people. One lady went back into hospital and she came out on the same drugs and right. plus a couple of others that we de-prescribed from her. Right. So it's that kind of thing that is really hard to move forwards with yes. without involving secondary care and having maybe a template that we shared between primary and secondary care that yes. everybody understood.
The stories that our practices have given us have been really motivating to me. I think it's really great to see how much they have made a difference to their patients' lives. And we've shown that they've made a statistically significant difference to their prescribing rates. This is all fantastic stuff and I think our practices will lead the way for other practices that want to tackle this really intractable problem of keep adding medicines to patients even though they might not be the best thing for them.